President Kennedy has been shot in Dallas, Texas. It is a day the city of Dallas isn't proud of. At 11.35, he arrived in Dallas. At 12.35, he was shot, and an hour later was pronounced dead. On November 22nd, 1963, the death of a president and a manhunt to find his killer that also left Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett dead. They felt that we're being forgotten. While it is a dark day in history, it's also an era the city has worked to preserve. So these were on Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay, bring them out. Straight off the original negatives. Fascinating. The truth of this is not getting out. You can walk through the history at the UNT Law School in downtown Dallas. Did you shoot the president? I didn't shoot anybody, no, sir. In 1963, it was the old Dallas police station where officers brought the president's killer, Lee Harvey Oswald, after his arrest at the Texas Theater in Oak Cliff. It was a historic site, and so efforts were made to rehab that, totally redo the building. The wall where his mugshot was taken still stands, as does the jail cell where Oswald was held for two nights. This was the maximum security area. There were no prisoners on either side of whoever was in the cell, first Oswald and then Ruby. Oswald was interrogated here in the office of Dallas Police Captain Will Fritz, where they took his statements. Let's go. Also in the UNT Law School is a new exhibit. Back to the wall detailing what happened to Oswald after the assassination. Officers converged on this man, grabbed him up, and hustled him out of the theater. Two days later, it was here where Dallas police were escorting Oswald from the police station to the county jail. The exhibit takes you on Oswald's final footsteps to the underground garage. You are looking in the same direction as Oswald did. That morning, he was gunned down by nightclub owner Jack Ruby. And you look out of this window. This is what you would see. All of the JFK material lives up here. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of records. In the basement of Dallas City Hall, some of DPD's documents are stored in the city's archives, including Oswald's fingerprints. This is one of several sets of fingerprints taken from Lee Harvey Oswald. There are pictures of Oswald's home. Oh, there's the picture. And the infamous photo of him holding the rifle used to assassinate the president. Handcuffed to Oswald was Dallas Police Detective Jim Lavelle, but Oswald was also wearing a second set of handcuffs. On his wrist like this. They are in a storage room at DPD headquarters. All right, let me get over to this other item. Ah. And there's the suit belonging to Detective Elsie Graves, who was also standing next to him when he was shot. He decided that he was going to preserve this suit and everything that he was wearing. So he took it to the dry cleaners, brought it back, stored it, and never wore it again. But what the officers at DPD want people to also remember is the murder of Officer J.T. Tippett. Tippett was killed after he spotted Oswald and believed he was the man who had shot the president. Oswald shot him several times and got him down to the ground and then shot him once while he was incapacitated down on the ground. J.D. still had his pistol in his holster. Retired police officer Jess Lucio, who joined the department not long after the assassination, says officers rarely wanted to talk about that day. The Dallas reception was just tremendous at Love Field. I began to understand that it was because they felt that history was passing by two important things. And that was that it was the Dallas Police Department who caught Oswald, nobody else, and at the cost of the life of J.D. Tippett. And that is why officials say it is important to preserve history, to honor and remember those whose lives were lost, those who witnessed the tragedies that forever changed a city and a nation. In Dallas, I'm Rebecca Lopez.